On September 25, 2012, the family of Mohammed Ba called an ambulance in order to seek help for the seemingly depressed 28-year-old. His mother, Awa, had recently flown in from the family's native of Guinea, West Africa, to be with her son. But instead of an ambulance, the cops came and Mohammed would end up dead after 10 bullets struck his body. that more than 100,000 African immigrants live in New York City? Discover the lifestyles of Africans living and working in the city. Africa in the city. Real Africans, real stories. 911 emergency. How a ba knew something was wrong with her 28-year-old son, Mohammed, so she called 911. Police fatally shoot a man wielding a knife in Harlem. Tell those people why they killed my son for I called them. Four investigators say a 28-year-old, Mohammed Ba, attacked two of the officers with a knife. We want to know why they kill him, why they even break down the door. Oh, so who will call now for help? Who will call for help? Who will call for help? Who will call for help? Police brutality is such a controversial topic, right? The death of Eric Garner on Staten Island, Michael Brown in Missouri. For many, they become examples of how police and minorities deal with each other. Now in New York City, every borough has a story. And I'm in Harlem right now with one family who is still fighting for justice. Here's the story of Mohammed Ba. Today we are here to celebrate the vigil of Mohammed Ba, but in reality we're celebrating everybody's, all mothers, all children that lost in the arms of the NYPD. Every one of you is working, paying taxes to be protected. That is the reason my mother called for help. She was in need of help. Instead of having help, she is here today celebrating the death of our son, the death of my brother. I never have to have any dealings with the police nowadays. I really do. I, I try and walk that straight fine line because I, I don't feel safe. I wouldn't even feel safe calling the police at this stage in the game. And not every cop is bad or has the intention to overpower people with their authority in a negative way, but I will say that I do take precaution and I do get an airy feeling when they're around because they're just unpredictable at this point. New York City's African communities were outraged over Ba's death. For them, it brought up disturbing memories of fellow Guinean Amadou Diallo's death by NYPD in 1999. Diallo was shot 41 times by undercover officers. And just like Diallo's death, city leaders and activists spoke against Ba's killing, classifying it as a case of police brutality. When I come outside, Mohammed walked me up to that last building. But he was limping, lose weight, don't, don't talk straight. And he had, he was wound on the side of his head. And when we called the ambulance, I just, I saw right here a police officer car and back. When I saw him, he came close to me. I said, no, I don't call police. Go away, I call an ambulance. Finally, I see those people coming with my son with CPR. I said, what's the people doing CPR to my son? I run behind, I want to get in the ambulance for Mohammed. He said, no, 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 you can't come with Mohammed. Finally, 
They took me in the living room and the doctor shook my hand and said, I'm sorry for your loss. They killed you, son. I said, why? Why they killed my son? I said, you don't know. Happens all the time. Why is that? Because in law enforcement, the, the district attorney and the police work hand in hand every day. And I think it's really hard for a district attorney to turn around and prosecute the very officers that he depends on to prosecute his cases. Historically, the victims of police brutality in New York City are amongst the poor, working class, and immigrant populations. And as racial tension grew throughout the 19th and 20th century, African Americans and Latinos would become the primary complainants. But eventually, African and Caribbean immigrants would join in. If you simply look at the oversight entities now in place, uh, the new inspector general and new leadership at the CCRB, both resolute about getting it right in terms of the relationship between police and community. I feel bad for the civilians and I also feel bad for the police. I, I have a couple of friends who are, who are cops and they're scared for their lives because some of us are really, really agitated and frustrated and we want to blame somebody. The police harass me um, and accuse me of doing something that I didn't do. And with my due process, eventually I was vindicated. But again, that was one incident. I've been in situations and I've seen situations where the police were helpful. Make some noise for Muhammad Bayo. The NYPD needs to change the way that they deal with us, with people in our community, and in particular with people who are in distress who need care. The criminal courts have failed Mohammed's family. There was no indictment. You need an independent prosecutor in these cases. Back in the 70s, we had an independent prosecutor for police corruption and corruption generally. And I think we need an independent prosecutor who has nothing to do with the police, so that when these kinds of cases happen, that that case goes to an independent prosecutor. If I know those people are going to kill my son, I'm not going to move. I was going to stick with my son. I was going to stick on that door. Now, they tell the people that he have the knife. And finally, they say the knife lost. I ask justice for Mohammed. The Ba family is not the only family seeking justice for the killing of their loved ones by members of America's police force. The rate of these incidences are astounding. According to FBI records, a black person is killed two times a week in America. And in general, blacks are three times more likely to die from police encounters than whites. And with these facts, justice against police brutality has become a national outcry within America's black and brown communities. Now! We want justice! 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 Africa in the city. Real Africans, real stories.